It's okay. Okay, well, good morning. Glad you all could um, join us this morning. <clears throat> um, if you don't remember who I am, I'm Stephanie Brown Houston, the project manager for informal education. And to my left is Clarence Jones. Across the table is Naomi Lusain. We refer to her as Shay. So here we have two organizations. We have the regional Francis Lure. Lewis Scholar Driven Learning Lab Laboratory. Did I get that right, Brooke? Yes, you did. <laughs> okay, and then we also have Horizon Education Center located in South Illyria. Um, Hello, Kara. Hi. Okay, so right now I'm going to turn it over to Chris. So he can give you a brief overview. And basically what this is, is you attended the Train to Train and Workshop. So you had an opportunity to work with the Centaur Challenge. And that's when you created the car. And it only took you uh, an hour or two to do that. But there's other logistics involved where it's going to stretch the information over a few weeks' time for you to engage with the students. So at this time, I'm going to let Chris here we have information and um, so um, I'm just going to bring up the document. If you haven't gotten it or if you forgot, um, this is part of the CD that was given to you as part of the Train the Trainer uh, presentation. And uh, so um, just as a real, real quick refresh, the reason that we have this is that we're celebrating the 50 years of the Centaur rocket design. Um, and there, the unique features of that design, which included the... Um, Basically, it's just a, a real the, quick uh, first liquid hydrogen and oxygen rocket. Uh, uh, the ability for that rocket to be able to start, stop, and then restart again. And then the fact that there were over 200 missions flown that went all over the solar system, all the way from the sun through Mercury, Venus, um, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and even on into Pluto and beyond. So uh, it's quite a, a robust system. And so we're using that uh, to kind of feature with this 50th, design, 50th anniversary design challenge. We wanted to kind of focus on just a reminder of the design challenge objectives and what we wanted to do with this. So I'm going to scroll through kind of the, the past um, history stuff and kind of work towards the design challenge objectives here. And so the whole key to this challenge uh, is that the students are going to uh, design and build a self-propelled vehicle uh, that's going to use balloon power. They say, uh, you know, air pressure is a propellant, so balloon power. Um, and that this uh, balloon-powered vehicle can move a payload, uh, which we've designated as being 25 grams, um, along the ground on that uh, design challenge mat. Now, for your uh, sites, you'll probably just design a mock-up for that. Um, and then that is so they would move uh, out into orbit, into kind of the, the uh, area where they would make the turn, then make a mid-course correction and start up again and head to the bullseye into low Earth orbit. Um, so uh, as far as the team, um, we have, uh, we're suggesting that, or well, we are uh, asking that we have teams of no more than five students per um, and we did have in the uh, facilitator notes, this is in page 11, um, that we had specific uh, design um, positions for those uh, students to be. So the design engineer, the writing engineer, the research engineer, the technical engineer, and the operations engineer, um, which is then further to find out if you, you know, to use those. Um, but basically saying somebody would be in charge of um, documenting the designing, somebody in charge of documenting how the process went, somebody would be in charge of the research in the background of Centaur, somebody would be in charge of the technical workings of the, the balloon rocket, and then somebody would actually be the student who would uh, work the operation of it. So moving forward now, um, materials. Now, if you remember, we did a quick balloon car as kind of the mock-up. You might remember this rocket car vehicle that we did. And so this was a mock-up. This activity is also available from NASA, um, and it's also in the design chat or the uh, train the trainer uh, binder right behind the um, Centaur Challenge design challenge in the same tab four. Um, but we used the uh, 
styrofoam meat tray and to create both the base of the car plus the wheels and we used a balloon and a straw to be able to connect uh, to be the propelled vehicle. Um, this we thought was a really good startup uh, way for kids to kind of get the idea of the concept first and then move on from there and build it bigger and better in order to uh, ac accomplish the objectives. Um, there also is in the uh, design challenge guide um, a set of Lego materials, which is listed in, and located here. This was um, part of the design challenge as well. It was in page 24. Now, this is just a, a an idea, a suggestion that you could use. The key to this is that it is very lightweight. It is very low friction. Uh, the wheels are very thin, so there's not a lot of contact with the ground. And um, once you get those wheels spinning, they, they move pretty freely and don't have much problem. Uh, however, on the downside to this uh, base assembly is that they don't have wheels that can turn. So if that was something that your students were looking to do, they would have to do some modifications. Um, so the students will be evaluated here based on this rubric, uh, and so therefore we recommend using it the same um, at your individual uh, locations. And so the rubric is actually focused on two major pieces. One is the um, the poster information and the, the discussion of the history and significance of Centaur and how it relates to this challenge. And so it's actually the writing element. Um, this would also fit into the uh, video submission stuff that I'll be talking about a little bit later. Basically, the information listed here would be the same information that would be in that. And on the second, the, the reverse side of that, um, is the actual challenge information, which includes how they do the design, how it works, uh, whether they uh, adhere to the challenge requirements, and how innovative the design is. Um, so this is actually kind of the activity on the mat versus the first page, which is really more the background information and the ability to document everything that they are doing. Um, so. Basically, what we would be looking at or suggesting here uh, for your groups is that your uh, local area would do an evaluation um, or a, their own kind of competition day, and these rubrics would be used for that. From there, then they would um, pick a winner a winning group and that winning group would then represent your organization coming here to the lab at NASA Glenn and they come into the gates and they do part of the, let's call it the finals, um, in which they would uh, basically do the same participation, show off the same design, work with the actual design mat that we work with in, uh, uh, here at the Train the Trainer and then um, basically get a final score from that and they would be doing a poster session with subject matter experts and, and uh, leadership here at NASA Glenn. So um, basically you would be sending one team from your site, uh, from each site, so one from the site in uh, the Horizon um, in Illyria and then uh, one from each of the sites that would be in Detroit uh, and so that's a total of four teams that would be competing in the, in the finals here uh, in our event. Now, um, even though only one group will get to go uh, and be part of the final competition here at Glenn, uh, we would say, and I'm going to back out of the document here, just realize. Um, so even though we'd have one from each group that would be coming to the competition here at Glenn, um, we would like to see everybody, each group, do a video submission for uh, basically showing off their design and showing off what they've learned. And that will be a process um, that they would actually upload a response video to YouTube on our channel. And so uh, we've started a, um, a Google channel for the Engineering Design Challenges and for Centaur. And in, um, in creating that channel, there would be a place where they can set, uh, submit response videos and they would do a response to the challenge and share their information. Um, so with that, um, uh, there is a quick little video that we're going to show. This video is archived and available. So if you um, don't get it all here or you want to uh, go back and reference it again, it's on. It's linked in the YouTube channel for the design challenges. It's also 
uh, available online, and it'll be in this archive as well. So there's multiple places where you can get it, but it's basically a creative video from us here at Glenn uh, and our interns last year uh, that will show basically how uh, would a good submission would be for students. And so we're gonna we're gonna pull that up right now. In today's modern age of technology, there are many sophisticated recording devices to help capture images and record sound. However, when using these devices, it's important to know how to successfully tell your story to an audience. Meet Dan and Anastasia. They're intelligent young individuals who are going to show you how to do just that. But before they get started, they first have something to share with you. Don't you, Dan and Anastasia? At the beginning of your team's video, you must provide the following introduction. This is team, include your team's name, and we chose the, include the name of your challenge. The title of our video is, and include your video's title. And most importantly, for safety's sake, do not give any identifying information such as location or team member names. Entries that do not follow this script exactly will be disqualified. Next, Anastasia is going to show you the proper way to hold a camera. Notice Anastasia is holding her camera firmly with both hands, but not too tight, keeping her elbows close to her body. This helps maintain a steady image and reduces shaking. If available, you may also use a tripod, books, or boxes to steady your camera. Do you notice something else? Look closely. Anastasia is holding her camera horizontally and not vertically. Record all your video with your camera in this position. This will help your video look much better. Always keep bright lights behind you, not your subject. Watch how Dan tries to shoot a video with a light behind Anastasia. Because video cameras adjust automatically for light, Dan's lens will close down because it's too bright. Anything that isn't bright will be very hard to see. However, if Dan keeps his brightest light behind him and not facing his camera, his image will look swell. Don't shoot at low angles. This will not be flattering. Notice how Anastasia is holding her camera just slightly above Dan's eye level. Shooting slightly above the subject's eye level will provide you with a much more pleasing image. For the best quality audio, Connect an external microphone to your camera. However, if you do not have a microphone, move in close to your audio source. Otherwise, you may not record the audio loud enough for your audience to hear it. Now that you've shot your video, you're ready for the edit. A variety of video editing programs are available on your computer or online. These programs can show you how to put together still images and video clips. For more neat ideas on telling your story with video, visit NASA's DIY podcast at www.nasa.gov slash audience slash for educators slash DIY podcast. Well, thanks, Dan and Anastasia. You've shown us some really handy dandy tips for making our videos just splendid. Now it's up to you. Get out there and make your video really super. All right. So, as it said, um, you're going to want to make sure that you identify the team name, whatever they call their uh, rocket or their team. Uh, what now? It said, what challenge did you choose? Everybody's doing the Centaur Design Challenge, but it is good to identify what challenge that was, and then also what um, their video title, how they would title their video. Uh, you know, as as far as what they did in their design. Um, Again, the key focus here is the progress, the work that they did to the uh, to the video, and the um, basically how they started, where they were going, and then how far they got. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they absolutely have to hit dead center bullseye by the time it's over, but as long as they share with us why they made the changes they did, what changes they made, what they started with, what they ended with, that's the kind of stuff that's really uh, beneficial because that really highlights the engineering design challenge itself. Um, 
So uh, the, now, uh, so along with doing the video submission, they are going to have an opportunity to interact with uh, a subject matter expert. And did you want to um, take on, or did somebody else want to share as far as the information on subject matter expert? Okay, um, subject matter expert, the centaur subject matter expert. We're going to um, set a date for the students, number one, to submit questions they may have to the expert. On the actual date of the session, the subject matter expert, expert will address all the questions that the students submitted previously. Now, earlier I introduced Clarence and Shay because they will be the oversight um, individuals that will watch all the kids' comments coming in and the questions, and they will be responding through the subject matter expert. Um, we'll explain that momentarily. Um, right now, we're asking that the questions be submitted by July 16th, and we're hoping that you all will be available for a live session with your students on July 21st. And the times that are going to be discussed, we're looking at the 9 to 11 time frame or somewhere between 1 and 3. The session will last one hour. And at that time, as I said, the subject matter expert will respond to the questions that the students have submitted. And the questions come from, if you just, um, while you're working on your projects, questions may come up that they may want to ask the expert. So that's why we're designing this um, particular event. Also, after that, we realize that questions may come up after you talk to the subject matter expert and you say, oh, I wish I had an opportunity to ask this question again. Well, we're going to have a depository where the students can actually submit their questions after the event um, with the subject matter expert, and we'll respond to their questions 48 to 72 hours after they submit them. Okay. Does anyone have any questions right now? Okay. Yes, I mean, yep. Go ahead. Um, okay, so with the, oh. uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll go to the semifinals and the final competition. In the email, there's a small section there, and it says each team's final vehicle design shall be put to the test. And what I mean by that is, as Chris stated earlier, you're going to formulate teams amongst all the students. And what we want you to do is have a challenge at your facility um, amongst your students, and then we want you to select the final representative team that will be representing your organization here at Glenn Research Center for the final competition against the other teams. Um, that team is selected selected based on your rubric, we are asking that team to resize their vehicle and their poster to create a 500 word essay and um, on how they designed their project, the obstacles they overcame, and their final solutions. We're asking them when they complete their video to upload them by August 1st. The culminating event will occur here at Glenn Research Center on August 6th. And at that time, we will have some subject matter experts. We'll have our leadership team um, come and review and interact with the students. And then we'll have a game competition. And between the organizations, one final winner will leave here um, with something that I cannot mention right now. But there will be a recognition ceremony. Uh, also, during the competition, your teams that you left at home will have the opportunity to view the competition here at Glenn and cheer their teams on um, virtually. Do um, you have anything else to add, Chris? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, one thing, uh, just in case, and checking uh, with the, with the Detroit groups again, just as a, as a you know reinforce is so because we know of the sizes of the groups um, that Horizon would have one team that would participate and that the uh, if I hear if I heard correctly Brooke uh, I hear that there were three groups participating from the Reginald Francis Lewis is that correct three 
it's, it's three different schools, it's three different locations, and it's 30 students at each location. Perfect. So with that being the case... Six teams. It's six teams from each location. So we'll have like 18 teams all together competing. And from the 18, I guess you, you're telling me I have to select one. So that means... No, I'm not no, no, no. Right. That's what we were checking. We would like to see one from each of the sites. So everybody's doing the same thing. And then each three. of the schools will have their own. So you'll have a total of three that would be coming from, from the Detroit okay. area. Okay. Okay. Not one, three. Yep. Because you have three sites. So we want... One representative from each of those three sites. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure that that was clear. And then we have the one site from uh, from Elyria from the Horizon Education Center. So it'll be a total of four teams competing here. Uh, plus that will include. Uh, so that'll be a total of uh, no more than twenty students plus the chaperones or facilitators that are coming with them. Um, and then uh, they'll get a chance to to do the uh, the culminating event, the poster session, the competition, you know, here on the game floor, Matt, and then also uh, be able to see, uh, you know, a, a tour, and it's actually going to be, uh, if memory service is going to be a different tour of the facility, of a facility that uh, was in, involved in Centaur, different than one that you guys saw as part of Train the Trainer, um, so that'll be kind of a neat uh, now, opportunity. I do want to interject something here, um, and only I can do this. <laughs> If for some reason, because if you have five or six teams in each group, and if for some reason you have a tie between the teams, at that time you need to notify me to let me know it's really hard for you all to make a decision and request that two teams be sent instead of one. Okay. Okay? That's not, that's not bad for us. Now, now, in your mind, are you are you thinking that this is going to be a, a, a are you scheduling that uh, August sixth event for like an all day? Is that an all day, an eight hour day activity? Um, it's we're not looking at totally all day because we understand that there's going to be some travel time from the Detroit side. So uh, the expectation, I believe, we we're talking about a beginning around eleven o'clock. So that would give you enough time to be able to travel up. Uh, somewhere around that time. It's tentative right now, uh, but it would be it allow you to have travel time in the morning, get here to be able to participate, do the uh, poster session, have lunch, do the um, competition on the floor, the tour, the recognition ceremony, and then be off and still be able to get back, uh, you know, back in the Detroit area in a reasonable time in the evening. Okay. Okay. We good. We good. We're trying to make sure that you don't have to come up with hotel reservations. Right. For that's why I asked that. Okay, yep. we, we good. We good. Okay. So I believe as far as I, that's everything we had. Are there any other questions that need to be addressed at this time? Um, Kara, are you okay with this information? <laughs> yeah, I heard from Kara in a little bit. Okay, now lastly, right now you only have one, one, it's only one site competing from the Cleveland area? Because I'm trying to hype our thing here as if, uh, you know, we, we got to come in with, a, uh, with a, a team on steroids because we're competing against Cleveland and it's a vehicle design. I'm, 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 I'm gearing it towards more vehicle than, than Centaur Engineering. I want to do vehicle because this is Motown. And I'm trying to get the uh, automobile manufacturers hyped about this, so they can spend the kind of money that that's necessary. But I also want it to be like it's not like we got three teams coming to Cleveland and they only got one representation. So it's actually like we're competing against ourselves. Right now, you only got one one group that's coming out of Cleveland. So far, yes. Okay. 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 And just to let both of you know, um, this is a pilot program, so you all will be the historians for this. Um, That's such a good term for guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say guinea pig. So you all will be the historians, and we're hoping that this is successful. Um, naturally, I was looking forward to at least five to six organizations participating, but that was not the case. But management says move out with it anyway, and um, you all will be the ones to put this project program on the map. Okay, so I, from my side, I'm gonna just try and promote it as if we're the drivers. Uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make light of the um, that there's only one group or one site competing from the Cleveland area, 
So there's a possibility between now and, and the 14th for me that I could bring some other sites online. Um, it's, it's not a guarantee, but I'm going to be pushing for that now that I know there's only one group coming out of Cleveland. Okay, that's fine. I just need to be informed. Okay. Tara, you're awful quiet. Are you still there? I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Detroit, Detroit, Detroit is going to dominate. We're going to break it, too. I'm sorry, Carrie. Can you repeat that again? Oh, uh, we'll be there too. We'll be good. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm hearing Detroit talking a lot of smack, so I'm yeah. kind of hoping that you guys can represent a little bit. We're small, but we're gonna bring it. That's right. That's right. Represent, Kara. That's right. Okay. Okay, and uh, you all have the information that I sent on um, where you to submit your questions, and then would you follow up on? The video question and the test spaces there. Is that something we're going to do? What's that? We're going to send more information regarding the upload. Yes, yes. To, to YouTube yep. and also, um, Chris, if you can quickly mention how the questions will be posted there. So, okay, yeah. So there, there's, there's two pieces here. First is um, that's submission of the subject matter expert questions. They're going to come in through uh, the email. And actually, I can pop that up here. Let me pop that up real quick just to make it a little easier for people to see. Um, and that information is also in the email that I sent out. It's under general inquiries and questions for subject matter experts. Yeah. Um, so, right. So with the the submission of questions to this GRC at opportunities at mail.nasa.gov, that is pre the subject matter expert uh, discussion so that the subject matter expert can have an opportunity to look those over and uh, be able to provide quality responses to them. In the session, then, the students will be able to ask those questions of the subject matter expert live um, and do a discussion, kind of similar to what we're seeing here, um, and, uh, and kind of put it together that way. Again, just like this video, that video will also be archived under the YouTube channel. And so because of that, uh, then any further additional questions you could post as comments in that YouTube que uh, video. <coughs> And so if there were further questions, we can submit there, uh, and we'll uh, review those and submit them back. Um, and either uh, one of our education specialists will be able to handle that, or uh, if we need to forward that on, we can have the uh, subject matter expert discuss uh, some of the more finer specifics if the students are asking about things uh, of that nature. So that's kind of how we would submit the questions. Um, like if we're just doing the GRC at opportunities ahead of time, just so we have that available for the SME before he gets on screen uh, and starts to share um, and, and go with that. Uh, and then uh, as far as the video submissions, they're going to be on the same channel. There will be a place to put that. We haven't designated exactly where that's going to go yet uh, in the YouTube channel, but it will be... Um, the, it will be obvious, and we'll send a link that, that we can uh, give it to you to directly and say, okay, here's where the uh, the student videos go. Um, in order to do a YouTube video, it's the same thing that what you have here. So you're, you're going to need a YouTube username to work from. Uh, and so you can use the same Google username that you have here. If you've logged in with this, then it works over on YouTube. And um, so you can use that as your submission, or if you want to create another one that isn't in a, you know, a personal account, um, that's fine. Uh, it's all up to however, you know, whatever works best for you and your organization. Um, we will uh, be moderating everything as far as questions, comments. So if you post something on a question and you don't see it immediately pop up, or if you post a submission and you don't see it pop up immediately, we're just checking to make sure it meets all the standards. Um, because of the requirements that we have, you can't have student names on videos. Um, so we don't want to have like, uh, you know, this is Josh Smith and James Dodson and, and Rebecca Evans or whatever, you know, we don't want to have those names because then that's identifying to students and that's actually a violation of our uh, childhood uh, online protections. So if you don't see something that you submit right up on the bat, don't re you don't have to resubmit right away. Uh, it's just going to be go, th go through a moderation process and make sure that it meets all of our standards and then it will go up uh, shortly thereafter. So uh, just kind of keep, keep an eye on that but understand that if things might not pop up right away as an online uh, submission in any case. Um, so. And you'll be receiving um, more correspondence from me um, as a follow-up after this session. And if you have any questions, you have my number, you have my email address. 
Okay. Is everyone good? I'm good. Okay. Okay, well, great. She said you're good, thanks. Okay, well, thank you for taking time out of your schedule this morning for us to go over this. And uh, you'll be hearing from us again. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Looking forward to the competition. All right. We're looking forward to it. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye. See you. Bye.